everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is one that I've sort of toyed with making um, over the past few, I would say months to be honest, once I actually knew that daily surgery was going to, you know, be around the corner. And I wasn't sure what to do, but I realised that now we're almost at this stage, I have been really interested in how other parents' experiences have gone and how other babies and children have gone. Um, with their cleft palate repairs and I wanted to try and make a series so that if you're watching this right now and you are about to see your little baby or your little boy, your little girl, like child, go under for cleft surgery and you're terrified like I am, then hopefully you will find some comfort in it and hopefully you will find some advice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> I was, um, I found out last week and I was at the kitchen table, it was quite early in the morning actually, and I noticed that my phone had flashed, um, which meant I'd like got a message or a text or something, but I was trying to encourage my little boy to eat his breakfast with one hand and feed my little girl who's the baby with the cleft with another and I eventually looked at my phone and I was really tired and I was sipping a coffee and I looked at it and then I stopped and burst into tears and um and I was really shocked I think perhaps more than I anticipated because um obviously if you followed uh, my channel for a while or you you know you found me elsewhere or whatever then you m might know that Daisy was born with stickler syndrome which is what I was born with as well so I passed it on to her and even though we knew that there were like risks involved there was a 50% chance all of our scans pointed in the right direction it was all a big thumbs up and everything was fine but when she was born that wasn't the case it was a huge huge shock for us and um, she has stickler syndrome as part of that she has Pierre Raban sequence or PRS which is if you're not familiar um a sort of sequence of three things which includes a recessed jaw and a big size like normal size tongue but because the jaw is so small it is massively in the way of the airway and can fall back and block the airway and as well as that there is usually a cleft palate as well of which Daisy had all three. Now Daisy didn't have any um sort of operations to um fix that it was time that sort of was the great healer in her case because there is um instances where babies are fitted with tracheostomies which we actually fought and got a second opinion on and we were right and we won because she's not needed that and has not had any compromised airway issues um since we've had her home um instead she had a nasopharyngeal airway which was a hollow tube down her nostril which acted as a splint to stop the tongue falling back but also gave her a clear channel for air to pass through as and when she might need it. And another option is what's known as mandibular distraction where the jaw is separated and broken apart and moved forward and pinned into position and they, these are all m massive things to have done and Daisy actually managed to get through with just the tube which came out when she was around 12 weeks old. Um, and she was tube fed for a long time she did have a few feeding issues and it was only really when she got to about i would say five months that that tube came out and she was just fed orally but we still had some struggles with like weight gain initially and sorting it out and it's only really been these last few months that life has been i, I use the word normal and i don't mean to use it in that way i just mean that for the most part my life might have been like the majority of other parents. My life might have been the way I imagined it to be and expected it to be and the way it was with my son. So we enjoyed a lovely couple of months and we've had like Christmas and it was amazing and we've had like you know this part of January but when I got that text I was just really shell-shocked because she's going to have to go back to hospital and I'm going to have to pass it over to someone and trust them to look after her and to protect her 
and I feel like that's my job and I feel like no one can do as good a job at that as I can and her dad can so that's hard in itself and obviously the hospital that she's going back to is actually the hospital that tried to give her a tracheostomy sorry one sec I'm gonna go and get a tissue oh sorry um yeah that hospital we didn't have the best experience of because she wasn't born there she was born at our local hospital and was transferred there and it was meant to be a quick routine visit and she ended up staying there for about two weeks which is very hard for us because it was further away and their diagnosis was not the diagnosis that we were told before we went and it was a nightmare and I still think it's a fantastic hospital and while it might be obvious to some of you what hospital I'm talking about I'm not going to mention it now because I don't think that it's fair because my experience is reflective of everybody else's experience and I think the NHS is bloody amazing so it's just the way it was for us we were caught up in a really awkward situation and it was fine and we came through it and Daisy's come through it but just to go back there where I've got a lot of you know negative and painful emotions that I sort of left there it's very hard when I go back and I don't like the feeling that it gives me and um you know, I'm worried as any parent would be when your baby's going under and I I just, I'm absolutely dreading it, I really am um, because I know that she's going to be in pain which is obvious but I also know that it's like the best thing for her like this operation will mean that she will be able to make sounds like you or I can like I had a cleft repair and I had speech therapy and initially my speech was terrible and now I you know I do videos and I speak and I can sing and in my old job I would do voiceover for videos and things like that like I I've come so far because of this happening and it's changed my life and but at the same time like she makes these little noises that are like clefty noises and if you're a parent with a cleft baby you'll know exactly what they're like but there's like the Darth Vader where she's like oh, which is just so funny there's the excited noise that she does where she goes oh, oh, like that and then she like squawks and she's more nasal and she's just got the cutest little voice and it is gonna change like she's not in a sound same anymore and I don't know why that upsets me so much because she'll still be there and she'll be alive and she'll be fine and but it's just the, the changes and sort of letting go of all of the you know the past nine months or almost ten months by the time it's done and um it, it's hard and it's hard to take your child in to be fixed when you don't see them as being broken like you know this has been so difficult for us but I wouldn't change Daisy at all I wouldn't and I'm really proud of her and I think that everything that she's been through has made her this amazing little person and I know that she's a credit to our family so taking her in part of that just feels wrong but then I know it's the right thing to do and then at the same time as with all of my concerns as a parent there's also the guilt associated with the fact that she is going through all of this because of something that I passed on to her and um, I know that she's not going to turn around to me when she's a teenager and say oh sorry you know mum I hate you for this and I blame you and this is all your fault because I know that she won't even care or notice any difference like I didn't as a teenager but I I just feel so bad like I feel so bad that I'm gonna have to take my daughter to hospital and she's not gonna know what's happening and I have to take her to hospital and I have to see her go under and go through a lot of pain and I'm gonna have to be away from Bill for maybe a couple of nights um, and our lives will be a little bit um, stunted for a week or two I suppose because we're supposed to sort of keep her out of harm's way like germs and stuff like that and I don't know how that means I'll do the school run and things like that and I am just worried and there's you know a lot of people go she'll be absolutely fine and she's going to be okay but to be honest with you like of course I know that deep down but it doesn't really help matters right now the way I feel um because I do I just want it to be over and um 
I haven't even mentioned when the date is. Uh, so, in February, there's this special day, and it's the day of love. So, I really hope that all of you have, like, your loved ones with you, and you are as loved as possible. But if you could spare a little thought for her when she goes in then I would be really grateful because I am really nervous and I know it's not the biggest thing in the world but it doesn't really matter when it's your baby does it um I just wanted to update on my feelings now so that if anybody did see this and was feeling the same way I am then they know that they're not alone and I'll update on you know the things that I'm taking with us um like packing I've got her some gownies made especially from home so she can wear those when she goes in um like special sleep suits with no feet so she'll be able to wear those and I won't have to cut the feet off um you know like the food that we're taking in and things like that and then I'll also do an update on her pre-op and how that went and I may do a vlog of like the actual experience itself but with Daisy's privacy and with respect to her in mind um also because I imagine that some moments of that happening can be quite distressing and I don't want to upset anyone unintentionally as well and then I will try and do an update you know afterwards a week afterwards a month afterwards and then if we do do any subsequent things like speech therapy or any additional repairs and things like that then I will try and do my best because I used to work in the job that I've handed in my notice in, they're a brilliant place and they do um, websites and campaigns and you know they basically just make things happen for charities online and they are amazing but part of my job was involving content and helping people and making a difference and I know from my job that stories like this massively help fellow parents and even children and adults with cleft palates and I also know that you know it's the right thing to do from my perspective as a parent as well so I hope that this either comforts you if you're just like me or it might help raise awareness if you're one of my subscribers already or if you're someone new that stumbled across my channel because cleft palettes I don't think are very widely understood even now and I would like to change that and give everybody the tools to sort of support people when they need it so yeah um sorry for such a rambly video and sorry for getting upset but I wanted to do this justice so wish her luck and um i will see you soon thanks for watching